getting here had a minor accident on the way home I ran over a pedestrian and the guy was a real pain in the ass about it too first he wanted me to call an ambulance then he wanted me to call the police that's when I left some people are just a little too pushy you know anyway this is my place I hope you like it uh, I live here by myself I was married before but my wife she was one of those women who wanted to be independent so I threw her the fuck out. <laughs> and I live here by myself, and I kind of like it. It helps me in my work. I'm a freelance writer. I write the usual stories and articles. I, I wrote a fitness book you might have seen, uh, Eat, Run, Stay Fit, and Die Anyway. And I wrote a short history on the uh, golden age of tongue kissing. And I've even written a play. It's a fantasy about a vegetarian who eats so much fiber, he turns into a wicker chair. Needs a new third act, I think. But my current assignment is an article I'm writing for that girly magazine, Bush and Trail. Now, you might have heard that some writers have trouble getting started. In fact, some guys will do just about anything to keep from writing. Like me. Today, on the way home, I stopped in the supermarket and bought a box of tampons. I'm not even feeling cranky yet. So, it's simple avoidance, really. That's all it is. But I do need the money, the magazine's in a hurry, so I'm not going to procrastinate. Today, I'm gonna to get some work done. And you know, it's not as if I don't have a lot of research material. I have little notes to myself all over the apartment. And it's an interesting subject. Little known facts about United States presidents. For instance, did you know that in the original draft of the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson wanted to call King George an asshole. <laughs> so it's good stuff. It just needs a little work. Right. And that's what it's gonna get. Uh, well, it's not my fault. After all, I gotta answer the door. Might be a fire drill. Could be a door-to-door -door prostitute. You never know. Oh, Patty Dunbar. How are you, Patty? Hi, George. Are you at home? Uh, no. I think I went out about a half an hour ago. Oh, don't confuse me, George. I'm looking for my car keys. Patty, didn't the people at the hospital tell you you're not supposed to be driving? George, I can drive as well as anybody. There's some real crazy people out there. You know, on my way home from the therapist, I ran over a man who had just been run over by somebody else. Well, I'll tell you, George, it was nothing but tread marks. You should have seen him. Yeah, uh, I think I did. Patty, uh, if you just drove your car home, Shouldn't you still have your keys? One would think so. And yet, I don't know. So little of the world seems to make sense these days. Oh, George, please, you've got to help me find my car keys. I'm in a hurry. Hurry? What can you be in a hurry for? Patty, you just came home. I'm going to a macaroni dinner for gay vote. People, I can't be late. They've suffered so already. Look, why would you think I have your car keys? I haven't seen you in three weeks. George, could I borrow your ice cube trays? Mine all seem to be full of water. Patty, guess what? What? You're going home. Again? Yeah, come on. 
You know something, George? Come on. I'm gonna search every apartment in the building. And when I find my keys, you know what I'm gonna do? I have no idea. Well, if you find out, call me. <laughs> oh, George! Oh, Patty, Patty, let me help you, honey. Help you. Help you. Help you. Get some work done now. Come on. Ah. Mr. Spiro, he has my car keys. Oh, George, I knew it all along. He's a Shiite. A Shiite? Well, I guess it's possible. This neighborhood used to be all white. Actually, at one time, it was all Indians. But they moved out when the English started moving in. Of course, the English were in control of everything until the American Revolution when the Americans decided they wanted their independence so they could practice slavery on their own. Now, the neighborhood is fairly well mixed. We have all colors and all races and nationalities, and everyone lives together in a state of constant suspicion. So every now and then, the tension is relieved when someone is killed for no reason at all. Some of these people are pretty strange. George, they're here. They're here, they finally landed. Toki, who's here? The people from the spaceship. Oh, the people from the spaceship. What planet are they from this time? You don't believe this, George. It's called Springfield. Springfield? A planet called Springfield? Yep. It's made of wood. They come in search of varnish. I think they're gonna redecorate. Toki, when did all this happen? Last night. I had just come home from my date with Miss Patty. Oh. You ever been driving with her? No. But then again, I've never jumped in front of a subway train either. She's dangerous, George. Oh, yeah. I just took her car keys as a service to mankind. Well, that solves one mystery. Now, about these space people, Shh. what did they look like? One of them was just a neck. A neck? No head, no body, just a six-foot neck. Red, too. I really identified with him. Okay, so uh, one of them looked like a neck. What about the others? Well, the short one was the most human. He looked like an aluminum Sonny Bono. <laughs> but the woman, the woman was the strangest, George. Wait a minute, now, how do you know it was a woman? <laughs> she didn't know nothing about football. <laughs> anyway, I know this is ridiculous, but it's true. Mm -hmm. She looked like a large, perfectly made, Grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, Toki, that's it. You gotta go. Come on. You were doing fine till you got to the grilled cheese. Just a plain grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. No fries, no, no garnish. No. A little brown. Oh, oh, it's too bad because I don't like grilled cheese. Let me know if you come in contact with a rack of lamb. <laughs> grilled cheese. Sonny Bono. A six foot neck. I need this, right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hello. Uh, hi, this is Arnold. May I speak to Elaine? Elaine? No, I'm sorry. I think you have the wrong number. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Maybe now I can get something done. Hello. Oh, uh, hi, this is Arnold. May I speak with Elaine? Well, ordinarily uh, you could, but the fact that no one here has ever heard of Elaine might make it difficult, don't you think? <laughs> Oh, yeah, is this the same wrong number? Uh, yes, it is. And, uh, may I ask that perhaps the next time you call a different wrong number? Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm really sorry, man, okay? Okay, that's okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, uh, did I call the right number for Elaine? Elaine is dead. What? Yeah, found her body about an hour ago. Uh, what happened? Well, the police aren't sure. All they found was a mule wearing a contraceptive. <laughs> They're looking for a man named Arnold. <laughs> you know? You see, I feel that if somebody gets a wrong number, it's usually his fault. So I say, punish him. <laughs> Speaking of punishment...
All uh, right. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Bobby, how are you? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm fine. Thank you very much. I, how, how, how are you? How are you? It's very nice. It is very nice. To, ah, it is very nice to see you. Ah, it is not nice to see you. Bobby, 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 do I sense a problem? Uh, I lost my, I lost, I lost my, I lost my job. No, no way, I didn't really lose my job. I'm, I'm, I mean, I mean, I, I, I know where my job, I know where my job is still. Just when I go there, there's this new guy doing it. Uh, and, and I don't even, I don't even know, I don't even know his name. I don't even... Ah! Scott Bale is the Antichrist! <laughs> Okay. okay, okay, Bobby, okay, now look, okay, you lost your job, okay, you lost your job, I, I, I but now, job. now, what are you gonna do? I mean, what kind of a plan do you have? I, I'm gonna get a new job! Good. I'm, go, I'm going on a job interview. How do you think I look? Uh, well, you look sort of fine. Uh, well, what kind of job is it? I'm gonna be working in a nursing home with elderly people. Oh. Ah, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, today, today, Guy, I'm a, I am a living example of Dianetics. Bobby, 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 I really worry about you. Uh, I, I, worry about I, you. I, worry, I worry about you too, George. I think, you, I think you're getting way too much caffeine. <laughs> I am a shaker and a mover. I am the coffee generation. Okay, okay. No, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, what I mean is I'm wondering about people to look out for you. I mean, what about your mother and father? My breakfast toast is soggy with her tears. Bobby, Bobby, what about that girlfriend now? You had a nice girlfriend you were going with. Uh, you, you know, you know I lost my girlfriend. Oh. Uh, I didn't really lose my girlfriend. I mean, I know where she is still. Yeah, yeah. Just when I go there, there's this new guy doing it. <laughs> Now, Bobby, Bobby, listen, Bobby, you know I love you. You know I care about you, but I'm busy today. I got so much to do today. And you, you ought to get downtown and get that job interview, huh? Oh, that's no, oh, no, no, that's okay. I got plenty of time. No, Bobby, Bobby, what I mean is I'm, I'm really busy, and you should, you should get down there early and make a good impression, huh? They'll like that. They'll think you're a terrific guy. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just, Bobby, Bobby. Do you just, think I'll be okay? Yeah, you're gonna be fine. Just, you know what? Just be yourself. Uh, be myself. Yeah. I, I, I am informally engaged to a roll of piano wire. <laughs> Maybe tell them that. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye, Bobby. Oh. I gotta take a break. I need something. And this time I'm not procrastinating. I need a quart of vodka, something like that. Let me see what I have. Oh, okay. This will have to do. Club soda. Boy, that was exciting. Mm. Hey. Here are some of those research notes I told you about. How did I miss these? This is going to help with the article. Richard Nixon once wiped a booger on the King of Norway. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt, who was sexually attracted to baseball players, used to get a hard on during the World Series. <laughs> Boy, this is good stuff. I'm getting a lot done. <sighs> hey, this is good, too. Reading the newspaper? That's not like goofing off, is it? Could call it research. Don't know what you might find in here. See what's going on. I see they found a new Gabor sister. Harpo. And here's a story about Watergate and Deep Throat. You know, this has got to be the only country in the world where a president can be forced to resign because of a man nicknamed after a blowjob. Well, I gotta get serious here. Sooner or later, I'm gonna have to buckle down. 
Oh, no, not that time already. Oh, I don't want to miss this TV show. I've been waiting for it all week. I know. I gotta sharpen some pencils anyway. I'll watch TV, sharpen pencils at the same time. That's sort of like working. Sure. And now, Channel 10's award-winning interview show, Let's Meet Someone. I love this show. They got great interviews. Here's your host, Lois Bromfield. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are privileged to have with us a man known all over the world as the Prince of Peace. We have with us the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Welcome, Jesus. Well, uh, thank you very much, and uh, just let me say it's great to be back and a uh, long time no see. <laughs> now, what can you tell us about the first time you were here? How many miracles did you actually perform? Well, uh, actually, most of those things weren't really miracles. <laughs> well, what were they? Uh, parlor tricks, optical illusions, things like that. But in the gospel, they said they were miracles. Well, a lot of that gospel stuff was made up. You know, Luke was a physician, and he used an awful lot of drugs. Hmm. Well, <laughs> didn't you raise Lazarus from the dead? Well, first of all, he wasn't dead. He was hung over. Uh, but in the Bible, you said he was dead. Ah, uh, no, I said he looks dead. I said, he looks dead. <laughs> Luke probably made that up. Well, tell us about the apostles. What kind of men were they? Well, they smelled a lot like bait, mm -hmm. but uh, they were a good bunch of guys. What about Thomas? Was he really a doubter? Oh, you couldn't tell this guy nothing. You know, always asking me for my ID. To this day, he doesn't believe I'm God. Well, are you God? Well, partly. Uh, technically, I'm a member of a trinity, but uh, yes, I am God. And that brings us to your book that you've written about the trinity called Three's a Crowd. Oh, uh, yeah, Three's a Crowd. You know, actually, it's nothing more than a thinly veiled attack on the Holy Ghost. Now, wait a minute now. It's not an attack, okay? The truth is, I don't get along with the Holy Ghost. Why? Well, you never know what he's gonna be. One day he's a dove, another day he's a tongue of fire, next time you see him, he's a blue light. What is that? Mm -hmm. Hey, I see him on business, and that's it. Mm. Well, now, what can you tell us about the Last Supper? Well, first of all, if I had known I was going to be crucified, I would have ordered a bigger meal. Mm -hmm. I never want to be crucified on an empty stomach. That must have been awful. I mean, weren't you scared? Oh, yes. Near the end there, I thought it was going to rain. You know, I was afraid I would be hit by lightning. But, uh, I don't know, I guess it redeemed a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. Hey, what do I know? Right. Now, what do you think about the religion that you started? Well, I tell you this, I certainly wouldn't want to be a member of any group whose symbol is a man nailed onto some wood. Mm -hmm. A better symbol would have been a bird, a flower, something like that. If I was to start another religion now, you know what the symbol would be? What? This. Mm -hmm. Huh? Simple? Nice. Put it on all the hats? Sure. Tell me, does God know everything? I don't know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. One more thing. Do you have any advice for our viewers? Advice? You mean, uh, like, uh, how to remove a grease stain, something like that? No, spiritual advice. No. Well, thank you, Jesus, and good night. And no sweat. Thank you all for watching. Join us tomorrow on Let's Meet Someone as we interview Abraham Lincoln. I know him. You do? I know him, Abraham Lincoln. Boy, that's a great show. I wonder how they get those guests. George, they're back. Oh, yeah, and so are you. They come back just like they said they would. The same three? Well, not exactly. A Nick and a sandwich are the same, but the short one ain't Sonny Bono no more. Who is he this time? Neil Sedeca. <laughs> what they told me, George? What? They're concerned for the safety of our planet. Well, so am I. Especially if Patty Dunbar finds her car keys. No. They're scared, George, because our technology has reached a level that makes us a threat to the entire universe. You mean nuclear weapons? Christian television. <laughs> well, I gotta go, George. You're gonna give me the secrets to the universe. And a new bass boat. Secrets to the universe, Toki, don't miss that. Ask him how to get snot off of corduroy. Secrets to the universe.
What I need is the secret to how to get a little work done around here. Oh, come on. When does it stop? Well, at least I know who this one is. This is my mailman, Biff Doyle. Coming, Biff. Howdy, George. Hey, Biff, what's with the shorts? Oh, uh, a Doberman ate my regular pants. Oh, uh, <laughs> occupational hazard. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you got for me today? Oh, that's not your mail, George. That's Patty Dunbar's mail. Oh. Hey, hmm? I didn't know she had a brother in prison. Well, he's probably safer there. Now, he says in the letter he's serving five years for mopery. What's mopery? Oh, I think mopery is the crime of taking your clothes off in front of a blind girl. Is that a crime now? Oh, yeah. No wonder the dog got so mad. Oh, I almost forgot, George. Mr. Spiro asked me to give you that note. Oh, okay. He's having a birthday party tonight, and he wants you to pick up a few party favors at the drugstore. Okay. Well, I'll try and do that for him a little bit later. Not much mail for you today, George. Just this uh, catalog here. Okay. And a letter from your Aunt Vera. Oh, good She old sounds dear. real good. Mm -hmm. uh, still having trouble with Eddie, though. Well, thanks for saving me the trouble of having to open it, Biff. Hey, my pleasure, George. <laughs> I gotta go now. I gotta deliver this love letter to Mr. Fogarty from his girlfriend. Oh. She must be something. Yeah. She wants him to get on all fours, dressed as a bull, and she's gonna attempt to milk him. <laughs> you gotta read this letter. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna wait till that shows up on Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> okay, so long, Biff. So long. And listen, don't sit on any small animals. Hey, Oh. Aunt Vera, I can't wait till I get a letter from her. Let's see what she has to say. Dear George and Biff, how are things in the big city? Fine, I hope. I wish I could say things were fine with me. Unfortunately, Eddie is in trouble with the police again. Eddie's my cousin. I really thought that when we moved out of that awful neighborhood of yours and Eddie got away from Bobby Green and that nosy mailman's son, he would straighten out. He's not really a bad boy. He hasn't been the same, though, since his father was beaten to death by a roving band of schmucks. <laughs> Last week, I caught him committing sodomy with a drake. Believe me, I'll never eat duck again. By the way, I might be coming to visit you next month. Eddie is due for his electroshock treatments. So long for now. Love and kisses, Aunt Vera. P.S. I'm still praying, like you asked me, that your ex-wife will be paralyzed in a truck accident. <laughs> Good old Aunt Vera. She's terrific. Well, at least I'm near the door for this one, huh? Okay. You order Girl Scout cookies? Are you a Girl Scout? No, I'm a fucking zucchini. <laughs> Look, did you order any cookies or not? Uh, yes, I believe I did. You believe? Look, mister, I'm not here to jack around. What flavor did you order? Uh, lemon wafers. Hey, macho guy. <laughs> we ain't got no goddamn lemon wafers. Well, what do you got? What do I got? I'll tell you what I got. I got about 10 seconds before I get pissed off and slam dance on your nuts. <laughs> Oh, we got left the ginger snaps. Take it or leave it. Well, hey, no, I had ginger snaps last year and I didn't like them. They were too hard to chew. Too hard to chew? Oh, I'll soften them up for you. There's your fucking cookies. You know... Scouting has really changed. <laughs> I gotta get to work. Oh, Spiro's drugstore order. I guess I better call this in and then go down and pick it up, save a little time. This is a new place called Drugs Are Us. It's supposed to be real good, all the junkie shop there. Hi, this is Mr. Carlin. Yeah? Uh, I'd like to place an order, and I'll be down to pick it up. Okay. Okay, uh, this actually is for Mr. Spiro. He's having a party, and he needs a few things. Okay. Okay, first of all, some vaginal jelly. Dan 
conventional jelly. Right, and a good foam spermicide. Okie dokie. And some Vaseline. <laughs> what size Vaseline? Well, his parties are pretty wild. Uh, do you have a gallon jar? <laughs> yes, gallon of Vaseline. What else? Uh, okay, can you recommend a good pubic shampoo? Well, at the last party, someone gave the crabs to his rug. Oh, God. Yeah, a week later, he spotted some mice scratching their balls. He spotted what? Uh, never mind. Okay, I've got something new. It doesn't kill the crabs, but it makes them swell up by darn, and you can find them easier. Okay, that'll be fine. Uh, now, prophylactics? Oh, yeah. Uh, he'll need a couple of hundred. Okay. In assorted sizes? One size fits all, sir. Okay, uh, you got any French ticklers? All we have is Mickey Mouse and Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. You don't have any Prince Charles with the big ears? Not today. Okay, then make it a dozen Mickey and a dozen Rudolph, and uh, that's about it, I think. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute, no, here, there's one more thing. Uh, you got any prongs? Prongs? Yeah, prongs. Prongs? Uh, well, never mind. I I'll try to pick them up somewhere else. I I'll be down in a little while. Prongs? Bye now. I wonder if they have a place called Prongs or Us. Toki. Toki. What are you doing on the fire escape? I had to come this way. Miss Patty figured out I took her car key. Well, come on, you'll be safe in here. Thanks, George. George? Have you seen to <gasps> Relax, Patty. He's not gonna jump. It's a fire escape. Come on in, Toki. Oh, George. Oh, George, thank you. Toki, I've been through that. I have to confess something, Miss Patty. It's true, I took your car keys, but I don't have them no more. Hey, that's okay. I don't have them either. I gave them to some friends of mine. Some people from Springfield. Springfield? I grew up there. Of that, I have no doubt. Daddy, won't you come up to my place? I got some people I want you to meet. Hey, a party! Are there gonna be any drugs? No, of course not. Well, then maybe I should stop by my apartment. <laughs> Boldly go where no man has gone before. Party. Mr. Spiro's party. I gotta get down to the drugstore. I'm sorry to leave you guys like this, but I hate to have to stop work, especially since I'm getting so much done. But duty calls. So you guys take it easy now. Keep an eye on the apartment. And remember, if you're on the street and you see anybody from this building, keep moving. <laughs>